welcome to Airport Unlimited, coming to you from Whitman Regional Airport at AirVenture 2023. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Here's what's coming up on today's show. Stick around for the end of the program when we have Jack Pelton talking all about Mosaic. Delta Hawk is here, the next-gen power plant readies for production. Tom Poboresny is remembered fondly at the EAA Museum. These stories and more coming up on this very special edition of Airborne Unlimited. Engine news from Delta Hawk. It's been years since we've seen a new American power plant, much less one that takes advantage of modern technology. But Delta Hawk will be going to production in the first half of next year and helping to modernize GA in a big way. This year is a very special time for Delta Hawk. April 7th, 2023, Delta Hawk achieves its FAA type certificate uh, for our 180 horsepower diesel slash jet fuel slash sustainable aviation fuel engine. Uh, it's been a long road. To put Delta Hawk in perspective, we are 100% US owned. We are 100% US manufactured in Racine, Wisconsin, just down the road. And we look forward to changing the industry. The engine technology has kind of just not expanded and not moved at all. It's been very stagnant and stale for, since the, I'll call it the 50s. And we saw the opportunity to disrupt a very stagnant marketplace um, to, better, to better the aviation industry going forward. There's a good reason why there's so few general aviation, new general aviation engines certified because it's hard. It's much harder than we ever anticipated and that's why it's taken so long. We chose to make it harder because we refused to stray from our original vision of a simple engine. In engineering, simple is hard, simple is difficult. As an engineer, it's a lot easier to spin an engine fast, throw four valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams, electronics. That's an easier solution than making something simple. And this engine represents true innovation. The technology in this innovation is remarkable. Remembering Tom Poboresny. Sadly, we lost Tom last year while Oshkosh 2022 was in the works after a prolonged illness. But his work lives on and now he has been memorialized with a stunning statue in the EAA Museum. You know, it's been a year since a year ago this week that we lost Tom Poboresny. And I know that brings back a lot of emotional feelings for all of us. But today, we're here to unveil a statue to honor Tom and his tremendous aviation legacy with his achievements as an aerobatic pilot and his lifetime dedication to the growth of EAA. As I walked the line last year, I kept running into people who felt like I did. There was this reality we couldn't get used to, that the man who created so much of what we enjoy was suddenly missing. Now, today, we stand here at AirVenture 2023, honoring this place and this event and the man who made them possible for us. We have a terrific team of, uh, of uh, sculptors and uh, foundries out in Lublin, Colorado, and I called them all up and, and they're all in the, uh, they all have airplanes, they all have a aviation in their blood, and when they heard we were going to do this with Tom, they said, you bet, we'll get her done, and hopefully you all enjoy it. Thank you very much for coming. and. Uh, we're proud to be a part of this. The important point that I want you all to remember is that more than 70 years ago, Tom's dad had a great idea. He wanted to bring together people who loved aviation as much as he did. And then he tasked his son to build it bigger and better. And I think you'll all agree with me that Tom delivered. So, the sad news is both Paul and Tom are gone, but the good news is we're all here. So let's enjoy it. Have a safe week and have fun. And coming up after this break, Dyer Upgrades.
I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, bringing you all the latest from Oshkosh at AirVenture 2023. If you've seen something especially cool around Oshkosh today, let us know by posting it with hashtag Osh23Cool. We'd love to check it out. Dyer Upgrades. Dyer is here and taking over the single engine turbine market. They are showing their much upgraded Kodiak rough and ready high wing turbine. Now adorned with a monster Hartzell five blade prop, while the 80th TBM 960 is already getting handed over to a new owner. The one piece of news that is uh, right here at the show is the Kodiak 100 uh, Series 3 that has that five blade propeller. And uh, uh, we uh, actually have seen you know, the benefits on that particular aircraft, which uh, the goal was to not only be able to go back in and out of uh, backcountry runways the same way we we done it you know uh, previously but now we are significantly reducing the noise impact so we are having a huge benefit when uh, it comes to places not only in North America but also around the world where noise matters so we have those that benefit and which we work very much with with also I was mentioning, you know, the weight reduction, which is also something that we do a lot, and I'm sure that Didier will touch on the, the composite uh, side of our business and how we believe that this is the future uh, for aviation when it's uh, put, you know, at the right place. One example of what uh, customers are doing, this is North Carolina for our service, and they just got delivered this uh, brand new PSN322 uh, Kodiak. 100. The good news is we were on time to uh, get this aircraft fitted with a five-blade prop. Let's talk about the TBM 960, our flagship, 80 deliveries. We already delivered 80 of those TBM 960s, and soon we'll celebrate the serial number 1500 for the TBM. So a big milestone as well for our program. AEA's Oshkosh 2023 giveaway. Our partners and really good friends at AEA have some really great daily giveaways to provide to those of you who visit during Oshkosh 2023. Be sure to visit them in Hangar B at Display 2035. And coming up after the break, we get started with part one of our annual interview with Jack Pelton.
For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Let's get some info on all things Mosaic from EAA. Summarize, if, if you can at this point, what is EAA's position on what's been published in Mosaic? What do you like? What don't you like? What are we going to need to work on? Yeah, let me, let me just also kind of frame up the, the kind of level set everybody is. What happened is there is a process where they publicly release the reg prior to it going to the official docket for comments. And we, we weren't aware that that was part of the process with DOT. And so that's what occurred this week is they, they, they put out the, the copy. They would not let us have any, any visibility leading up to that. Really? They were really guarded with it. I, I got a kick out of reading everybody's, for, for the last year, their, their blogs on what they said is in it because there were some, some things that we thought were going to be in it but nobody, the FAA really was very careful on this one because they said there was so much riding on it because they wanted to include the drone activity along with the, the fixed wing stuff. And they said if that, if that got messed up in any way, the whole thing would die. And so we had some, some basic generalities, but no specifics until it, got, until it got released. Now, coming up in the coming weeks, it will go to the official docket of which comments can be, be made. And we're encouraging... Uh, that especially groups of people, if you have similar comments, that you bunch them together because the process is now they have to take all of those comments, they have to read every one of them, and they have to disposition every comment. And they, the FAA is very open in saying if all of you associations disagree on a certain item or agree on a certain item, bunch that off, then we only got to read it once. And, and then you can notate that 300 organizations believe this and, and you'll get the credit for it, but it'll make it run smoother. We could, we could bog it down if we get too many one-off kind of comments. Our first take at it is that, um, one, you never get everything you want to get. That's, that's part of the sausage making that goes on. But in this case, we got probably as much or more than you could ever dream of. It's very complete, it's very thorough. It does what we were hoping that it would do. Uh, I know people are gonna complain that it's only one passenger uh, when the rumor mill had it being four or more, and 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 you know you got to take what you can get. You you don't want it to uh, get withdrawn. And I think that's the other important note for them to get to this point and release it. It would be very very rare that it would never end up as a rig. It, it'll get tweaked, but they're not going to categorically withdraw it because it has already gone through the legal uh, eyes within the FAA and DOT already. So that's really encouraging, too, that it's made it this far. Probably the, the biggest number one item that we're concerned about is, well, they didn't establish a gross weight for defining what an LSA is. They, they defined it based on performance standards, which we really were all in favor of. But we think the stall speed is, is still too low that they're requiring. Mm -hmm. An example would be if you look at all of the Cessna 182s that were produced, some qualify, some don't. And it's only off by four, maybe four or five knots. Mm -hmm. The problem is like the vans don't qualify. And so that's, oh, that's a lot of airplanes. And you know, their wing and their design philosophy is very, very substantially uh, established and for, for good safe reasons and it's got great track record, but boy, that would be a big miss to not include all of those airplanes. So that's the biggest one that, that we think if it was equivalent to Part 23, then you, you have a much a cleaner, more definitive line as to what qualifies and what doesn't. Um, and I think it then also prevents, we, what we don't want is people fudging and getting in trouble uh, if their airplane is on one side of the, the stall speed limit or, or not. There's some concern with the, the medical requirements relative to night flying. And that's uh, probably the second biggest item that we want to look. I, I told uh, our team, I said, give people benefit of the doubt that some doc somewhere had a reason or rationale for doing this, but what's not transparent in that is how did they expect people to comply and what, what, what are various methods that we could use to, to comply. 
we want to go out and explore and get with our medical community to make a recommendation as to how that can be, be met and not foul up basic med along with the, the class three medical and all the other things. And don't complicate it so that you now, uh, as an as a unintended consequence, cause people to not be able to use the privilege that we have so successfully used since 2004. So those are the two biggies. Mm -hmm. Everything else is, uh, you know, when you think of the 250 knots and you think of uh, a There's lot. There's some surprises there, aren't there? Yeah, retract, constant speed props. The other piece to it that's really helpful from a cost standpoint is the maintenance, mm -hmm. where it now allows people to do maintenance on their planes. And there's some things in there we're going to make comments on. If you could take a standard category airplane and convert it to an LSA, if we could find a way to do that, that would allow owner maintenance to be, be accomplished, which would be a huge cost savings for people. You know, but, but the fact that we're talking about tweaks that, to something that's so complete, it, it's, it's phenomenal. It, I don't think it's completely sunk in that this week and this announcement is probably one of the biggest events in general aviation it's, in it's decades. It's a dividing line. It does. Um, I mean, everybody's been up till now justifiably complaining. Well, they promised this a couple of years ago and then last year and then this and then that, that. But, I, you know, I, I've been looking through it, looking through it, looking through it, and I'm kind of going, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this our FAA? Right. <laughs> we, we don't know who's running the FAA, but they're doing good work. Yeah, there you go. I never dreamed it'd get to where it is today. I thought it would be a, a gross weight limit change and that's about it. And, and, and Nobody wanted to touch electric or, or turbine-powered LSAs, so to get all of that is, is just fantastic. We're hoping, too, that um, it'll be another positive step on helping the pilot shortage issue because if you're, if you're going after an LSA rating and you see that the number of airplanes that I can fly are limited and i got to really retrain to go get a private and a commercial and different types of equipment, this kind of gives you, if I start my training in an aircraft that has the capability of getting me all the way through my commercial yeah. and uh, my instrument, boy, it's uh, a little more in intoxicating to want to go do it. So it's exciting. We're, we're, uh, we couldn't be more thrilled and um, very proud of all the efforts on both sides that went in to make this thing happen. Coming up tomorrow in the Jack Pelton interview series, he lets us know what he's most excited for this year at Oshkosh. Tw 23... Um, I'd say it's it's two distinct paths. One is now is the best time we've ever had for a career in aviation. The track to a, a, a major airline job in the right seat is so quick right now. It's just a great time. And that does it for us here at Oshkosh 2023, day one. If you're watching us on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe and go check us out on Facebook and Twitter for other news and photos. Don't forget, you can also get anytime 24-7 coverage at aero-news.net. We'll see you back here tomorrow.